Hello, good evening folks, it's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFTs.com, bringing you a review or end of day or end of, uh, yeah, end of day review of US markets on the 27th of uh, July, Wednesday, 2016. Please be sure to visit Trade Signaler, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignaler.com. You can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now the uh, US markets, let's have a look here. So US markets certainly finished negative except the NASDAQ and that's... Uh, that's due to Facebook, uh, certainly some front running going into the uh, into the close. In terms of economic data, overwhelmingly the economic data was bearish. You had pending home sales, certainly weaker than expected in US durable goods, certainly weaker than expected as well. Uh, we did have the uh, FOMC certainly slant towards the hawkey side, although they have been conflicting uh, 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 um, certainly reports with regards to uh, the, the Fed. Now the, uh, the latest one I've read, from Mr. Lair Lydie stated that uh, the inflation expectations certainly were bearish and that's why we had the uh, uh, the rally and the euro, uh, the Aussie and Kiwi too late towards the session. So, and also that explains the rally in gold. But then if there's no inflation, why would you want to buy gold? So again, certainly is confusing, okay, to a large extent, by whether that's obviously a weak dollar related move. Uh, again, there's no real geopolitical or socioeconomic concerns that would trigger a move towards gold. So. Whether they expect that, uh, with certainly no additional QE coming from the US either. So, uh, gold really is an inflation hedge. So, it really is a strange move. Okay, but for now, um, that's basically the move that we have, and we have to interpret it accordingly. Okay. Now, my current trade at the moment, I am I am currently short Nasdaq and short the Kiwi. So, I'll certainly uh, give you my book in advance, just in case you think I'm trying to. Uh, to, to promote it okay so certainly give you my bias in advance okay so let's try to tackle the markets given the fact that we have a for my interpretation anyway and, and a lot of other analysts interpretation that the fed obviously uh, certainly acknowledged the improvement to to obviously in uh, in employment in terms of growth okay so uh, really the only um, the only factor now is inflation and if oil prices obviously are hitting a pivot are hitting a low of 41 uh, let's just bring up oil prices because oil, oil equals inflation so let's uh, try and decipher that okay so let's bring up the daily chart of oil first and foremost okay so we are now coming into potential support on oil okay so if this is a bounce in oil and then obviously inflation is on its way uh, and therefore you would uh, indicate that uh, the fed is going to raise rates now if the fed raises rates obviously that's net net negative okay it certainly kills the uh, the actual uh, oil trade straight away kills a commodity trade so again certainly interesting to observe let's just bring up the chart of commodities as well let's just bring up my commodities chart here we go wisdom tree so oil uh, sorry commodities certainly have bounced off uh, cap fill that bottoming tail certainly has, hel has held okay so now you're looking for a potential move higher so again what keep watching the commodity space okay you do have an unfilled gap below as well in the 200 ma so whether or not uh, the Fed obviously goes ahead and attempts to cut rates, and that obviously is perceived as being negative, etc., for the stock market, and therefore hurts commodities even further. So the Fed really is in a conundrum, okay? Really is in a conundrum. So um, confused as what to do. Okay, that certainly is the situation at present, the status quo. Okay, now in terms of the rest of the markets, let's do some uh, TA now. TA work. Let's start off with the Nasdaq first and foremost. Let's see exactly where this juggernaut is going. Okay, so the weekly chart at the moment of the just juggernaut at present is currently seeing at uh, resistance at the 4700 zone. Okay, so you certainly have resistance at 4700. If we continue to move higher, the next resistance is 4740 on the uh, the Nasdaq itself. Now it's interesting to see when we were talking about the Nasdaq. Let's see exactly where these markets are positioned. So let's look at the FANG stocks first of all. So Facebook, Apple, uh, or should I technically be Alphabet? But let's just look at Apple anyway, because we all know it's not it's not NASDAQ, it's uh, Apple DAX. So uh, daily chart at the moment, we're slamming into that 200 MA. Obviously positive earnings, etc. certainly has uh, has uh, created this potential, uh, really very impressive gap higher. Okay, so you've certainly closed a gap here, uh, or, or that was here. Okay, so that gap certainly has closed. Okay, so so one gap to another gap. Okay, so that gap on Apple certainly has closed. If we do continue to move higher, then the next gap is up here, and then obviously next horizontal re resistance is up here as well. 
Next resistance, gap fill is at 109. The next horizontal resistance is 111. So again, bear that in mind. Okay, but for now, I think we are looking for a snapback or pro potential profit-taking uh, target objective before the move higher. So again, for the Nasdaq, I'll show you say Apple. If you come back and retest the $100 level before we attempt to move higher, or if we close the gap and then move higher as well, again, there's a, there are two scenarios. Okay. So Apple certainly potentially into resistance. So again, meaning negative for the for the actual uh, Nasdaq itself. So Facebook, let's just bring a chart of Facebook. Now we already know it's broken out. So again, it's very it's going to be an impressive move, and it certainly remains bullish. The uh, chart of Facebook. Okay. Uh, bring up the chart of Alphabet, which is Google again. Certainly some room to maneuver here. Certainly room to potentially close a gap above. So again, be wary of that. And therefore, one would put potentially pre presume that you are going to see a con concerted move higher but you have this diagonal trend line to contend with so again that certainly is something to consider as well folks okay so you have diagonal trend line versus the gap fill above now again it certainly is a conundrum because you have weak durable goods you have hawkish potential fed so again it does it is indicating a potential move lower okay so now if I go over to my um, cross-reference points, which is the um, the actual uh, biotechs, okay, and the semicons. Let's just see if I can locate them. So there's your biotechs, okay. So your biotechs in the moment, the daily chart are into resistance, okay. So therefore confirming resistance on the FTSE 100, or shall we say the NASDAQ itself. So again, indicating resistance. Okay, so again, you did have this diagonal trend line. We've taken that out now, and you're back into this key horizontal resistance zone, which is gap, which is 200 MA as well. So the biotech certainly are into trouble. Okay, bring up the semiconductors. Semiconductors don't you certainly put in a negative day today? Weekly chart, you can see we've clearly broken out, but the daily chart certainly finished weak, and therefore indicating a move lower. So. Again, you have an unfilled gap below and certainly a negative sign. So again, from my perspective, my understanding, NASDAQ would certainly look to a potential reverse now. Again, it's all about FB or Facebook. And again, it's a question as whether those earnings are certainly factored into the market already. OK, right. In terms of Dow Jones, let's bring up the Dow Jones daily chart or the doji. So not exactly a encouraging sign. 60 minute chart still making lower highs. OK, obviously you negate H&S now. Let's just ignore that for now, folks. Okay, so taking a pivot high, take it across. Certainly, market isn't respecting that. Okay, so from my perspective, it certainly is lower, lower, lower highs. We've certainly bounced off gap fill. Ten-minute chart of the uh, the actual uh, Dow itself. Okay, so again, you got the unfilled gap potentially still remaining. The Dow certainly did finish negative a week, and obviously made a potential lower high. There is an unfilled gap up here and here, so two unfilled gaps to potentially fill. Uh, from my perspective, it certainly remains vulnerable to a leg lower, okay, given the fact that it hasn't made a higher high, it's making lower lows, lower highs, and again, you're looking at a potential lower low. In terms of the um, the Dow transports, let's just bring them up, okay, so Dow transports, daily chart, straight away looking bearish. Okay, looks bearish, looks like it wants to move lower. Even with the old prices moving lower, it's still looking bearish, so that's not a good sign. Again, it's certainly asking for that potential 200 MA, MA to be tagged. It's holding that diagonal trend line. It's making lower highs, so that certainly isn't good news. Okay, in terms of the uh, S&P 500, again, you've certainly closed the gap at 21.75. You've sold off, bounced, and then sold off towards the close. Again, making lower highs. Okay, so again, remains weak. 60-minute chart. On the S&P 500, you have a H&S formation. So again, this is a formation you need to keep an eye on, folks. Okay, keep a sharp eye on this in terms of uh, uh, the H&S formation. And again, you're looking for gap fill below. Okay, so H&S formation and gap fill below on the uh, S&P 500. And you can clearly see the unfilled gap, which is at uh, 2150. Okay, so certainly watch out for that potential gap. Okay, now in terms of the um, the Russell. Let's bring up the chart of the Russell here, folks. So daily chart first and foremost. Again, you're looking at horizontal resistance on the Russell, therefore indicating weakness on the uh, the S&P 500, looking for a move lower. 
60 minute chart on the chart of Russell again looking for potential exhaustion looking for a lower high here no higher high was created so again bear that in mind for the uh, next potential move on this uh, Russell and the 10 minute chart certainly, certainly, certainly holding in with regards to the H&S formation the pivot high pivot low obviously holding that 575 661% so again indicating weakness and indicating a move lower okay right uh, in terms of the uh, all the markets let's just bring up bring them up for you uh, in terms of the moves let's bring up the Shanghai again certainly indicating weakness looking for weakness in the Asian uh, Asian markets uh, the Nikkei as well closing the gap above indicating weakness uh, again looking for a move lower okay so certainly looking for a move lower in the uh, the actual Asian markets overnight they will be key whether or not the Asian markets can follow through or they actually fail and move lower. USD JPY, again, the reaction post the uh, stimulus, obviously, uh, indication again has been relatively weak, although overnight it should be interesting to see how the mark Asian markets respond. Okay, should be very interesting to see how this will respond, and that should be quite important in terms of the next potential move. Again, keep an eye on oil, certainly has a potential move to or more further, more to go. The VIX itself, uh, again, the VIX itself, yes, you are making lower lows, lower highs, but certainly vulnerable to a short squeeze given the fact that it's down quite substantially. Uh, and it certainly is into the oversold category. So again, keep an eye on that. Okay, so again, from my perspective, buy certainly remains bearish, looking for a move lower on US indices. Be sure to visit CFDs.com and take advantage of the 25% uh, bonus. Goodbye.